Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my art studio. It's good to see you here. Do you guys remember what our theme is for this week? We're going to do fish made with watercolors. Oh, can you see that? So I went up and grabbed my sunset of Crayola watercolors. So hopefully you guys have access to something like this. It doesn't matter if it's Crayola or a different brand or something fancier or something not quite so fancy. Whatever you got, we're just going to play with it. So my favorite thing about watercolors is actually the colors. They're so bright and vibrant, right? So I'm just going to show you right off the bat something that I played with. Here's the first fish that I made. And I love how with watercolors, the colors just blend together and it's all right if they like turn a little muddy or get a little messy, right? It's just so neat to see how they all interact and work together. Like all these unique colors working together to make something kind of beautiful, right? All right. So, you know, I love books, right? We're going to get started with just a couple of books that um, I thought of when I thought about watercolors and fish. So this is another one from my childhood. This is the same author that did the book with the bears and the mountains. Um, if you remember that from a couple of videos back, this is a story about an adventure that two boys have getting sucked down to the bottom of the ocean. And I just wanted to show you a couple of pictures really quick. For inspiration. Oh, can you see that? So these drawings are made with pen, like I did with my fish here, and watercolors. And can you see that? You're so vibrant. I love the yellow of the clouds. Here's the boys in their raft, and the, the water is getting all turbulent and stormy. And look at all the fish, all the colorful fish. Yeah. I love the way this artist uses his colors. Look at this. This is a friendly octopus and he's rescuing cats from the middle of the ocean. How funny is that? All right, so there's some inspiration and ideas for you right there. And then this book is one of my kids' favorites from the library. Hopefully the library still has a copy of this. Squid and Octopus. Friends for Always. This is an awesome book about friendship, if you guys can get a hold of this. But I wanted to show you this author and artist's um, imagination about what the fish might be doing down on the bottom of the seafloor. We got four square, we got swings, we got an eel flying a kite. Can you see that? And over here, we have our two best friends, and they are on a teeter-totter together. So, yay books! I love that books always have so many inspiring ideas for me as an artist. Hopefully you guys get a lot of inspiration out of your favorite books, too. All right. So do you guys have crayons still? Remember we started off this whole series with our big bag of crayons? So one of the techniques that I wanted to talk to you about um, with the watercolors is something called a wax resist, wax, like wax from crayons. So I grabbed these crayons right here and I drew some fish shapes with my crayons. And I tried to keep them pretty simple, but I put a couple of little details in there. Like this guy's got a little bit of like maybe scale, fish scaly stuff. And here's some jellyfish. And I gave them a little bit of their details. I actually looked, you guys know how much I love nature. So I actually looked to see what real jellyfish looked like and were shaped like when I went ahead to do this. So I drew some fish and here's an octopus. Here's a squid, jellyfish these shapes just with my crayons. And then when you come back in with watercolor details, the watercolor gets, it doesn't like the water and the watercolors, doesn't like the wax of the crayons. And so it stays away from that part and it fills in the rest of the other part. So that's something I want you to play with 
It's called Watercolor Wax Resist. And you can get some really neat looking techniques out of that. All right, so the main thing I wanted to show you guys today, it's gonna be a short video, but that's all right, right? We've got plenty to play with. This is called a blow technique, okay? So you all need to grab a straw, okay? And what you're gonna do, I'm gonna do this on some watercolor paper. If you guys have any watercolor paper, this is really fun to play with because it doesn't absorb the water quite as quickly. So it gives, lives, leaves like puddles on the paper and that gives you more to work with if you wanted to blend the colors or if you wanted, what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow the puddle of watercolor. So if you have watercolor paper, go ahead and get that out. If you don't, it's fine. You can still use whatever paper is in your journal. It just might bleed through to the second page. That's okay though, right? So to show you this, I'm just gonna use this little card. And I'm gonna grab my jar with my water in it. And I'm gonna get a nice big puddle of watercolor. So I'm gonna get a lot of water in here and I wanna get a lot of paint down on my paper. So I'm gonna make a puddle here. And you can make it whatever shape it kind of ends up being. So I got a puddle here on my paper. I'm gonna take my straw and I'm gonna blow on it. And look what happens. See how the ink spreads out? It usually spreads out whichever direction you're blowing it. So you can make it go out in all the different directions if you kind of blow around in a circle. I just blew in one direction. What's that look like? It looks a little bit like a jellyfish, right? So once you make stuff like this, I did a couple more earlier, then you gotta let them dry. Got some jellyfish here. I thought these guys looked a little bit more like fish. Once you get them to dry, you can take pens, if you have some pens, you know, like a sharper, Sharpie marker, um, or if you just have like a black ink pen, you can come back through and you can turn them into sea monsters or a jellyfish. Do you see that? Or what my daughter did, she had a lot of fun with this. She turned hers into bugs. Funny looking bugs. But I just love the colors you can get. Do you guys know how to blend colors with watercolors? Maybe I should show you that too really quick. All right, this guy. So my watercolor is still wet. So I'm gonna grab a different color. Maybe I'll do this purple here. And I'm gonna put it right up here in there. You see my spot of new color? I'm gonna blend, blow this one too. You see how those colors are kind of working together and you can see some of the original purple. Let me show you again with this one. I'll make, I'll make a big spot of orange. So there's my spot of orange and it's nice and wet. And I can take some red. And you can do things like if you tilt them, they'll kind of flow into each other. Or maybe they'll drip down the page if I hold this for long enough. Oh, you see the orange came back? Oh, and now here goes the red. It's going to drip. So watercolors are super fun to play with just to see what effects you can get. I'm gonna blow this one too, see what happens. I'm 
that. It's like a sunburst. You can do so many things with these. You can turn them into flowers. You can turn them into, um, man, aliens, dinosaurs, you know, whatever your imagination takes you to. It's a certain a fun thing to play with. So there you go. All right, that's about all I wanted to share with you. I just want you to go out and have fun with watercolors. It's one of my favorite things to, one of my favorite medium to play with. They just have so much potential, I think. Should we draw our um, theme and material for next week? All right, let me grab my jars. Okay, so our theme for next week. Oh, you're getting blinded by my lamp. Dragons. Okay, we're going to do dragons next week. And we are going to make our dragons out of... Number two pencils, like your yellow pencils from school. All right, bring your sketchbook. Bring your yellow number two pencil. Bring your imagination, because we're going to be making dragons next week. Awesome, guys. Stay well. Have fun. I will see you next week.